Hey there, folks, how's it going? So, we're going to talk about a game that I saw played, I forget how long ago now, at uh, a gaming club I was checking out in Canterbury. And this game is called Malifaux. It's, oh, how best to describe it, it's a very story driven game. And for those of you that watch my channel, you'll know that I have a small obsession with keeping things in story and in fluff. I, I can't do power playlists, I like to have background to things. So Malifaux is a very small skirmish game. It's normally on a three by three foot table, so it's nothing too big. And uh, you use like five to 10 models in a game. So it's nice and small, which is a big difference for me from huge 40K apocalypse games where I'm carting around everything under the sun. So uh, we have an alternate earth. Um, Basically, it's steampunk Victorian era, and magic has been discovered as real, and they have created this portal to an alternate world uh, called Malifaux. And in this world, there is a little frontier town, Wild West sort of almost, uh, which is also called Malifaux. And the game centres around the skirmishes that take her their place in this world for control of a resource called Soul Stones. Soulstones power magic, basically, and uh, everyone's fighting over them. There are various factions that you can take, and they all have their own backstory. So we'll take a quick look at the different factions and the deals behind them. So the first faction, um, that's the ruling house almost of the town of Malifaux, is a group called the Guild. Uh, the guild was produced by all of the uh, sorcerers, the magicians, the, the mages of Old World Earth coming together once the breach was found and, and Malifaux was discovered to form a guild, just like um, trades guilds exist now, um, to police Malifaux and control the flow of soul stones to ensure that their magic would never run out, would never deplete. So that's the guild. They are, in effect, the, the equivalent of the Imperium of Man. They are the... the I don't want to say good guys, but they are the main rulers of Malifaux. Uh, they are the police, they are the law, they are the judges and the jury. Um, and they are um, almost fascist in their rule. You have crews for these guys like uh, Lady Justice and the Death Marshals that go around hunting necromancers. And you have witch hunters that hunt down the native denizens of Malifaux. You have just the general guild police. You have the aristocracy. Um, so it's it's it's... It's an interesting um, faction, and it's the one that I'm going to be playing, uh, using Lady Justice. Uh, so that's the guild. Second faction then, folks, are a group called the Arcanists, or Arcanists, however you want to pronounce it. So, the guild, which we've talked about already, are practicing magicians and mages and sorcerers, and old schools of magic that have rules, have ropes and have specific spells. The Arcanists are normal people that have come to Malifaux, a world that is overflowing with magical powers and energies, and they have just spontaneously developed freaky new powers that aren't policed by the guild, that they don't understand, that have no schools behind them, that have no rules behind them. So the guild views the Arcanists as um, well, a rogue element, basically, and they try to stamp them out because it's not official policed magic. So the Arcanists fight against the Guild because obviously no one really wants to be stamped out. And they have their own funky, weird, off the, off the, off the, uh, away from the norm magics. And they're very, very cool looking models as well, the Arcanists. They produce, um, they're, they're sort of following their magical powers for the sake of to having magic and doing magic. They don't want to fall in line with the very strict authority of the guild. So those are the Arcanists. Okay, so faction number three in Malifaux uses one of their native magics, something that's not done a lot on normal earth, but is a native and common power in the world of Malifaux. This group is called the Resurrectionists. And there's no real prizes for guessing what they do. They reanimate the dead. Um, the Resurrectionists use necromancy. And they bring back, uh, not people, but basically puppets. Um, so if I was to reanimate someone as a, as a Resurrectionist, 
so my best friend died and I wanted to bring him back, I would have his body that would be able to run around and do whatever the heck I told it, but I wouldn't have his mind or his soul. The resurrectionists just create these soulless puppets that go out and do their bidding. So again, they're a criminal element. You find the resurrectionists use their powers to commit crimes and get away with it because, oh, I've got a dead body. Damn, who was animating it? No one knows. And I know what you're thinking. Normally I'd be doing the resurrectionists because I like the funky dead stuff, like the war machine cricks and the undead in uh, Warhammer. It's... Uh... But I just thought I'd be different for once. I do like the Resurrectionists. I think they are very cool and some of their models are awesome. But uh, I just fancied a bit of a change. So the Resurrectionists, criminal element of necromancers. Uh, I get some very cool masters, some very sick looking henchmen that rise up and do their bidding. So those are the Resurrectionists. Okay. Another really, really cool faction that I'm sort of on teetering on the edge of taking up myself because they're kind of wicked are the Neverborn. Now, the Neverborn are the original inhabitants of this world, Malifaux. And the Neverborn are demons and nightmares, basically. Um, Malifaux is a strange, dark reflection of Earth. And in ages past, it was just like Earth. And then something happened, some great cataclysm, that destroyed the, the whole rules of logic and order. And the inhabitants of Malifaux that lived through this have been changed by the magical energies. And they, they take on forms of demons, of uh, monsters, of, of just nightmares. Um, and they're pretty awesome, really. Um, they look absolutely horrific. But the way that the models are done, they're... they're they're just, it's really hard to describe without seeing the models, but the Neverborn just look amazing because you can see the demon in them, but you can see how they've come from either a human thought or an idea. Uh, there's one particular moddy that, that model that's uh, a child's teddy bear. It's not too bad. Apart from it looks absolutely hideous and insane. And it's got this big grinning maw and claws and oh, it's brilliant. It's really good. Um, so as you can guess by my level of enthusiasm, something will probably happen in the future with the Neverborn, but I'll, I'll get my guild crew done first. So Neverborn, original inhabitants of Malifaux, human nightmares basically. Very, very cool. The newest faction to arrive in Malifaux are a group called the Ten Thunders. Now the Ten Thunders are the Yakuza, basically. They are uh, very heavily themed in the Asian continents. They have a very sort of tight-lipped, do not betray the family mafia almost uh, background. So Yakuza, the Japanese and gangsters basically. Um, they have some very, very cool models as well. One of them is a, a nine-tailed demon fox. Now where have we heard that before? Uh, there is, uh, there are assassins, there are ninjas, so they're, they're very, very, um, very oriental in their theme, uh, look absolutely stunning, and in terms of their background and what they do in Malifaux, uh, the other factions are very overt in their, in their motives and, and what they're trying to do. The Ten Thunders are very, very secretive, very clandestine. They like to work in the background to try and manipulate things in their favour. They're playing the long game. Not something I'm massively interested in as a faction, but they look, again, stunning. Pretty much all of the Malifaux models are produced by Weird Miniatures. They look really, really, really cool. Um, 32 mil, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot of them coming up on the channel soon. There is one final faction that exists within all of the levels of Malifaux. So from the guilds, the arcanists, the resurrectionists, the ten thunders, the neverborn, there are people that aren't aligned with any of these factions. They maybe have their own agendas, or they might have betrayed them too many times, or might have just been kicked out for any reason, and these are the outcasts. The outcasts are all out for themselves, they have no real agenda. Everyone has their own storyline in there. So there's groups like goblins, mercenaries. There's some pretty quirky characters in there. And they're all just out for themselves, basically. Very, very cool concept, because it's, 
it's nice to have that. Everything in other a lot of other gaming systems is very this 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 this. So what happens if you don't fit into these categories? So having these outcasts in there I think is a really nice touch in terms of the story, but also for players, who how you like to play. I don't want to be in them. I want to be my own person. Be an outcast. I mean obviously they still have characters and, and henchmen and models and set set fluff, but it's nice to just be outside of the regimented norms every now and then. So those are your factions. Malifaux itself as a game is played using um, a deck of cards, not dice. Uh, tape measure, 3x3 tile, some scenery, your crew, and uh, markers and counters. What we'll do is, because uh, I have one to hand, we'll have a quick flick through one of the fate decks, the decks of cards that we use to play Malifaux. And um, basically, if you want to keep tuned on the channel, you'll see unboxings and painting tutorials coming up. One thing that is changing soon in Malifaux uh, is they are beta testing at the moment second edition rules. So I'm not going to get playing just yet. I'm going to wait for the new edition of rules to come out. So I'm going to get my crew together, get it looking lovely. When the second edition rules come out, I'll start playing from them. But let's take a look at a fate deck. One of the really cool things about Malifaux, folks, is that there's no dice. All of Malifaux is played with a tape measure and a deck of cards. Now, you can use a standard deck of playing cards. 1 to 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, and two Jokers. Malifaux, uh, Weird Miniatures rather, the company that produced Malifaux, do produce their own decks which are set out uh, with different coloured backings depicting which faction you uh, choose to play with. Obviously I've gone with the guild, which are the red backs. So, everything in here, in your cards, you have your number, the mask, uh, so your suit, and on each card, weak, moderate, severe, which are for your damage flips. And they all have different artwork across them. Let's find the one of the suit that I'm missing, which is a tome. So, your four suits. Masks, rams, crows, tomes. Which are basically the same as hearts, clubs, spades, uh, diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, eleven is jack. 12, Queen, 13, King, Ace is 1 in this case. Um, also in your deck you will have, and this is going to take me a minute or two to track down, no, that's a 1, a Black Joker, and a Red Joker. And these have various effects in the game depending on the flips that you have. Very, very cool little game, which I'm going to be learning. And I'm just looking forward, really, to getting a few games in once the new rule sets are out. Each suit is associated with a particular faction. Rams are associated with the guild. Masks with the Neverborn. Crows with, if memory serves, the Resurrectionists. And Tomes with the Arcanists. Um, and as well as the numbers, the suits have an effect on your flips for damage. If you flip a particular suit that your character needs to do this action, you get a trigger and something funky and cool happens. So these are the fate cards that are used to cheat fate in the wonderful world of Malifaux, which are pretty cool. So I'm going to be making some progress uh, through my Malifaux crew. I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to play many games because I'm, in all honesty, up north I'm trying to find people that play, I say north, Midlands area, that play Malifaux. There's not that many. Uh, a friend of mine has just uh, picked up a goblin crew and is starting with those. But um, I'll probably be waiting to play until I've fully moved in down Canterbury Way because I know the Crusaders down there have got a couple of players. But it gives me time to get the crew together. Anyway, fate deck and a tape measure. 
that's what you need, obviously your crew, but that's what you need to play a wonderful game of Malifaux. Stay tuned folks, there will be more to come on what will hopefully be known as Malifaux Mondays. Whoop whoop. Catch you in a bit folks, bye.